<laughs> Hello, Sonia. Great to be with you. Oh, it's fantastic to have you, David. How are you doing this morning? Yeah, really good, actually. Yeah, lovely Monday morning, New Year. So I'm looking forward to good things. I hope this New Year, even well, though last year was a terrible one. But, you know, we've got to make it good. Well, exactly. Look, everybody, it's politician, leader of the Heritage Party, David Curtin. David and I wouldn't necessarily agree about all things. But what I do like about David is he walks the talk. And we live in an age where people are, are afraid to express what they really feel because they're fearful of being cancelled. But that doesn't appear to be an issue for you, David. Where did you get your, <laughs> you know, from? Where does that all come from? Goodness me, you know, well, I mean, I've been in politics actively for about seven years now, and I first stood in the 2015 elections. I got into politics for two reasons. One, I was concerned about the European Union and where that was going. And now we see, you know, the corporate powers behind that, you know, stepping up a whole other level um, this year and last year. So we have to speak out about that because that's threatening our freedom and our democracy. And I was also concerned about political correctness as well and how that was completely corroding our nation from within, taking away free speech. And then, you know, now we've got this, um, you know, as an example, the whole transgender agenda, yeah. which is like, you know, if you don't agree with that, something that is scientifically and factually untrue, then you can lose your job for example. I mean, you know, we've got to speak about these things. Otherwise, you know, we we're just to. going to be run over by these things like a steamroller. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, is what annoys me, of course, is that you have these groups of people who try and keep the lid on these subjects. And when they can no longer do it, they then do an about face, don't they? And it's like mm. Piers Morgan is a perfect example. Oh. He has been hugely involved in the whole mm. kind of lockdown implementation and, you know, obviously calling for it constantly. And now last week, he's suddenly going, wait a second, are people dying of COVID or with COVID? It's like, mm. you're supposed to be a journalist. Yeah, We've been saying this since the beginning. Doesn't this just frustrate you, David, that uh, it, these people with massive platforms are doing this? Oh, it's absolutely appalling. I mean, he was one of the people from the very beginning that was, you know, not just for the narrative, he was actively smearing uh, and taking down people who cancelling people who didn't agree with it. You know, I was there from the beginning and other people were, you know, who've got an even bigger platform than me, uh, like Peter Hitchens and so on. I remember an interview where he went on Good Morning Britain and he probably thought he was going to actually be given a fair chance to explain his position. But there were basically four of them cutting in on him, taking him down, calling him names. He wasn't even given a second to actually answer right. a question. Uh, yeah. And now Piers Morgan is now trying to to pretend like, oh, you know, I've been asking these questions all along, but he's on record. I mean, we know that he's one of these people who yeah. has actually been, uh, you know, undermining freedom from the yes. very beginning. But he's not going to get away with that. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. I see that Full Fact did a fact check on you. The moment that any Full Fact do a fact check on you, I always think you're on the right side of history. <laughs> um, and it's because you said uh, COVID-19 is, or, or to paraphrase you, COVID-19 is no worse than a bad flu season. In fact, your full quote was, the politicians and the media have a very, very poor understanding of science and mm. mathematics, and they've pursued and pushed a narrative that the coronavirus, COVID-19, is is far, far worse and more dangerous than it actually is. The reality is that it's no worse than a bad flu season. And they couldn't outright dismiss what you were saying. So all mm. they could say was it's a flawed comparison. <laughs> what did you think when you saw that they, they'd fact checked you like that? Oh, well, it's a badge of honour, really, because they're fact checking everybody who speaks the truth. And you also with that get called a conspiracy theorist and anti-vaxxer. I even get called far right. I mean, I don't know what that's got to do with the far right. You know, it's, right. it's ridiculous. But, you know, what I said was true. Professor Ferguson's initial modelling was terrible yeah. and it was not based on any observed data. It was just an algorithm and you could get any answer out of the algorithm that you want to create a political narrative. And yes. that's what happened happened. But you know, the fact is, on the very day that the MPs first voted through the Coronavirus Act, I think it was the end of March 2020, based on his modelling, he changed the modelling to, you know, vastly reduce the yes. number of, yes. of, of deaths he said were going to be caused. But by then it was too late, the act had been passed, they were all gone away on holiday uh, for Easter 2020. And then, you know, the rest is history, we had the lockdown, and there was no way of them changing it. Yeah. Uh, well, or they could 
couldn't be bothered to change no. it anyway. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I, I do say, you know, I think that MPs in particular have got a really, really bad understanding of maths and science because I've got a background in science. I can see immediately when they're using a graph and they're actually, they haven't labeled their axes properly. They're manipulating it to, to portray a certain narrative rather than giving you the full facts as it yeah, were so this full fact organization needs to actually check all of the graphs yeah. and the numbers coming out of these um uh groups like sage and, and imperial college and so on Yes, exactly. Full fact, as we know, there is some investment from Google and Facebook. So mm. obviously they've got a dog in the race, as they say. Now, let's have a look at the Heritage Party manifesto, because basically one of the things you say is whoever you sort of vote for on the ballot paper, they all have the same policies. And this mm. is absolutely true, which is why I am now politically homeless. I come from a Labour background. I could never vote Labour now. It's just they're ridiculous. They're a, they're a sham of a party. And one of the things that you absolutely agree on is uh, a, a, a pushing really is the whole idea of common law mm. um and uh, so tell us a little bit about that regarding the heritage party yeah absolutely i mean i think yeah, our common law is is what's traditional here it's not just traditional it's been you know it's a fantastic system i think it's the best system of law in the world and you know the basic principle of common law is yeah, everything is permissible unless you do uh, harm you cause harm damage or loss to another person and then a judgment that's made in a court and you have the right to a trial by jury is then common to all the people and and that's a fantastic system of law and you have Hope that you have good judges but you know we even if you don't you have a trial by jury 12 of your peers who can then you know make a decision uh, on a case which is fair and then that will apply to to all people so that's our common law um you know our, We've, we've got statutes here as well, you know, from the parliament. And you now I'm not totally against the idea of statutes because sometimes you need laws, you need regulations. You know, for example, we all need to drive on the left because otherwise there'd be car accidents. That's, that's the obvious example. But what we have now is we have a takeover by a hostile entity. You know, you call it the New World Order, the World Economic Forum, whatever. They are actually dictating to puppet governments around the world, what I call the John Johnson regime. It's not acting now on behalf of the people. It's undermining common right. law. It's, under, it's undermining our understanding of what's right and fair. And it's undermining our fundamental freedoms. And it's telling us, you know, you're going to be arrested or fined or harassed or abused by the police if you talk to your friends in a park, you know, if you go to church. Outrageous. A terrible thing that happened on Good Friday when the police closed down a, a church service in a Polish Catholic church. I mean, these, these kind of things, you know, they, they shouldn't be happening. And, and you know, they're, they're absolutely against the principles of common law. Yeah. And you also, you, the Heritage Party is a big supporter of the whole idea of a traditional family, which, of mm. course, I'm sure you've been subject to all manner of criticism for that, because it's a dirty word <coughs> these days to talk about a traditional family. <coughs> I myself raised my daughter as a single mother. It wasn't mm. my choice, but it, the way it, it was the way it was. And frankly, I've raised a fantastic individual, <laughs> actually probably far better than Boris Johnson, who would uh, call someone like me feckless. Yeah. But but one of the things you say, and I do completely agree with you, is boys need fathers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't, you know, the, the principle of that, you know, what I put in the manifesto, I don't think any children should be deliberately raised without a mother and a father you Understood. know your situation it wasn't deliberate you know it just happened you know life happens to some people it doesn't always work out that way but you shouldn't deliberately do that deliberately create those conditions it's, for teenage boys in particular they need fathers to show them how to be men and yeah. to keep them on the right lines and to, to teach them how to be good and how not to be bad and you can see from every study every measurement that's ever been made you know boys that have fathers people who have grown up in traditional families with a mother and a father in general um, have lower rates of crime, better outcomes in education, better outcomes in employment, more stable relationships when they grow up, um, less likely to be uh, involved in drug abuse and so on. And of course, there's exceptions to that rule absolutely. Um, on both sides, you know, yeah. absolutely. But in general, um, that's what happens and you can't Stability. ignore that. So I understand I that. 
And, and I can't disagree with that. I really can't. I, I absolutely hear what you're saying, because even if there isn't a father in the picture, you do need a stable father figure. Mm. And I've, I was very fortunate. My daughter's father's still around anyway, but both my big brothers stepped in as a sort of in father mm. roles as well. And another thing that I completely agree with you, and I've, I've written and broadcast extensively about, is the takeover of queer theory into our schools. And mm. as you so rightly say, children do not need to know about gender fluidity or queer theory in schools. Expand on that a little bit yeah absolutely I mean I think most people just expect schools to teach children the subjects you know you send your kids to school to learn maths to learn English to learn grammar to learn languages to learn music to play sport you don't send them to school to get adult political ideologies you know which have come out of crazy universities mostly in the United States and have now been mainstreamed there and are now being mainstreamed here I mean now we've got relationships and sex education it's introduced into England by the Tories in Wales by Labour in Scotland by the SNP you see they're all working together they're all yeah, doing something yeah, they've yeah. taken away parents rights to remove children uh, from relationships education uh, and, and so kids are being taught about you know queer theory stuff transgenderism you know homosexuality even the acts you know in from when they're four or five in some cases and this is completely wrong you know whatever you think about secondary school I don't think these things should be taught you know until 16 at the very earliest when kids can choose but, you know whatever you think about that I think everybody agrees in primary school leave kids alone don't teach them about sex and all this kind of stuff you know, yeah. queer theory, transgenderism in primary school. Uh, you know, and you've got terrible cases now where mostly kids who are autistic, but others as well, get absolutely confused yeah. by groups coming in and yeah. teaching them that they're not boys and they're not girls. And they sort of, you know, latch onto this. Absolutely. And then the next thing you know, they've got gender dysphoria and they want to have, you know, A social um, contagion. And all this absolutely. Kind of Do you know what? I was thinking about that yesterday, David, because I've, uh, I've done quite a lot of work into this whole issue mm. of transgenderism and it's it is really appalling I think people are going to look back on us in the future and say okay so these children mm. had a sort of social contagion gender dysphoria whichever way you look at it is obviously there's a mental health disorder going on there and what are we doing we put them on a pathway to have healthy parts of their body removed by surgeons yeah. who are getting incredibly rich off this right. it, like when somebody says they have anorexia, you don't encourage them to continue starving themselves to death, right? That, that's that's exactly that is a really very 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 good uh, you know analogy because an anorexia is obviously a mental condition. You know, yeah. and people need help and they need counselling for that. But when it comes to gender dysphoria, now the politically correct thing is to say, well, that's not a mental illness. That's just natural when clearly it's not. And then you know, kids are or are encouraged to take hormones for this and you know no one is allowed to say yeah. no you've got a problem there we'll give you counseling and, and you know and when that happens most children get over it you know it's just a phase Absolutely they go right. through and Absolutely they get over it right. with counseling and with a couple of years whatever they revert to normal but Absolutely the thing is right. if you push them down the route of getting uh, puberty blockers, which I think yeah. is terrible, cross-sex hormones, and then Awful. surgery, Awful. they're never, ever going to have children of their own. They're going to be sterile. Yeah. And, um, you know, then a lot of them come to the age of 20, 25, and they completely regret uh, what's happened, uh, you know. And yeah. um, so we shouldn't be doing this. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Be. Do you know this what? It's so refreshing politician. to hear a politician speak his mind. We, we just don't get it anymore. And like I say, that there are some elements of the manifesto that I just don't agree with. And that's mm. not shouldn't be an issue either. But what I do really like is that you are prepared to stand up and be counted. And, and we just don't have that anymore. And the other thing that you say, and I completely agree with you again, because we've been hearing so much about these non hate crimes. We had Harry Miller mm. on last week, who's obviously just went on appeal in the high court and you said there should be no law or penalty for expressing controversial opinions making jokes or engaging in banter right. i completely agree with you right absolutely you know because if you take these hate crime you know this narrative and the regulations and laws they want to bring in to its um ends 
conclusion. You know, all of the kind of comedy that we grew up with, like Monty Python, you know, uh, It Ain't Half Hot Mum, Windsor Davis and so on, that would be banned, you know, that would yeah. be a yeah. hate crime. You know, you, you might find yourself up before the courts for sharing a bit of, you know, an, an old comedy uh, yeah. from the 70s or 80s, a carry-on film or something. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. But, you know, I mean, aside from making jokes and making banter, the very dangerous thing is people are getting cancelled for engaging in political debate. And, you know, yes. when I was on the London Assembly, I found this. I mean, the very last um, meeting that I was in, back to transgenderism again, I asked Sadiq Khan about one of the tweets oh. he put out about transgenderism. And the green woman piped up, this is offensive. I think the member should no longer be heard. And then a oh. Labour woman piped up and she said, yeah, I agree. Um, and then the chair said, well, you know, um, uh, what, what does everyone else think about about it, it sort of seemed to be general nods, and then he said, "Well, if you if you don't have anything different to say, then uh, you're being offensive, and you shouldn't be heard anymore." And I was I was shut down just That's for asking a question. You know, so this is when something is political. Yeah, I, I was cancelled for political opinions. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I remember also um, doing a, an interview with um, ITV just before the mayoral elections this year. And um, yeah, we talked about the Heritage Party and she asked me about traditional family values and so on. I said, you know, we think marriage is a man and a woman and so on. She said, Isn't that homophobic? You're homophobic, aren't you? And that was kind of straight away a smear for actually, you know, I, I disagree with the 2013 act you know the, the, and you're allowed to disagree i'm I'm allowed I, to disagree with an act but without be being called the names i was pro same sex marriage and you're not and it, but you should be allowed to say that that's yeah. the thing that's the whole point obi says bravo david you should be knighted for common sense contributions <laughs> to the poet sissy says i'm going to vote for david oh. um and uh, yes, absolutely. That yes, exactly. We used to call people names back in the day. Nobody got offended. And, that, and that's the thing is that this whole sanitization of our culture, the inability where we were not allowed to mock, where they say mm. actors have to be from that group in order to be able to act mm. a part now. It's absolutely ridiculous. They're literally killing off sort of, you know, art, creativity and mm. everything is being sanitized. And people like David Curtin, of course, are saying I'm not having it. And standing up. And and honestly, David, I'm so grateful to you. Like I say, we don't have to agree on everything for me to admire the stance you're taking. And I think that's really, really important. And you believe very much in our heritage, don't you? And in mm. our roots and reclaiming those. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and there's such an attack at the moment on our culture, which I think is terrible. You know, once again, London, you've got Sadiq Khan setting up a commission to look at names and streets in the public space, renaming streets, taking down statues and so on. You, look, look, we, you know, I think we have a wonderful history as a, a country. We got, we're a country to be proud of. There were some dark moments. Yeah, we had 150 years of slavery. Very, very small number of people engaged in that. And then we were the first country in the world world to ban it and, and not just ban it we spent most of the 19th century going around the world stopping other countries from engaging in slavery as well so you know we've got far more good in our history than bad but I what I, I really uh, loathe is people just using this critical race theory as it's called now to just oh. smear everything in our country and say we are systemically racist this is institutionally racist everything and then we've got to change our history and we've got to be ashamed of our history and you know basically telling white people for example you are guilty because you're white and this is you know the critical theory that's in america quite a lot but it's coming over to the uk oh, as 100%, well. 100 percent 100 percent it is it's awful it's absolute mm. indoctrination and i speak as the mother of a mixed race child actually same same uh orientation as yourself you're a white mm. is it a white you have a white mother and a black father is that the correct way well, around that's that's how I yeah that's yeah. that's me yeah, yeah. my daughter's yeah. father was uh, born in Kingston Jamaica so you know ab absolutely I completely agree with you listen David Curtin you must come back again we love this forthrightness <laughs> we're all Thank sick you. and tired of you know walking on eggshells and being PC correct we've got people all on Twitter saying get on to BNT right now and listen to David <laughs> listen <laughs> we appreciate you. you greatly our our viewers very much have appreciated you this morning yeah. and uh Yes, absolutely, David. 
I really do appreciate you being prepared to stand up and be counted. I wish you a very wonderful 2022 and uh, come back on again soon.